play with. I'm, I'm a fiddler. Okay, welcome to show number 60. Is that right, Dave? That is correct, sir. Awesome. Okay, well, tonight's just going to be sort of a general hangout. We're going to have some cool people on and talk about some things that have been happening and, and some fun things. We've got it all planned out for you. It's going to be a pretty short show because YouTube is going down for maintenance, which is once in a blue moon. And normally we do the show an hour later, but I have to do it an hour earlier, so we'll cut it to make sure it compiles in time. Okay, so let's get started with our guest. The only guy that's running late is uh, Thomas Hawk. He'll be here in about uh, five minutes. Is that right, Dave? Yes, five minutes, six minutes, something like that. <laughs> okay. Yes. Cool. All right, let's uh, start with uh, our special guest who's more international than almost anybody now on Google Plus, Gordon Lang. Gordon, that's you. Two squares, to the middle. You appear to be in some sort of bathroom detention facility. Hello, Trey, how are you? Thanks for having me. This is I'm, like, I feel like I'm back in 1975 <laughs> making a collect call to the UK. What's up with this delay? Yes, yes, I'm always constantly broadcasting from the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> He's still answering your question. The first thing he said. All right, this will be good. <laughs> it is. It is like that. I feel I should maybe be giving these scores for Europe. <laughs> well, okay, this is going to be confusing. Yeah. For him. Uh, why don't you just go ahead? I and must apologize talk. in advance. I'm uh, I'm on an AT and T mobile connection. This is the first time I've done a mobile hangout. See, this is the problem. Okay. All oh, right. Uh, my name's Gordon. Go, I test talk, digital talk, cameras. Talk. Uh, I run a website called CameraLabs.com. Wow! If you're still hearing that thing before, I'm now talking to myself. This is horrendous. I may uh, leave and rejoin this hangout. My name's Gordon. I run uh, CameraLabs.com. I'm just a great to buys guides. So if you're looking for a camera to buy this Christmas, please uh, check them out. I think I'm good. Leave the hangout and come back again in a minute. So okay, so I'll far, bid you adieu this is and like join a, you in one minute. <laughs> this is like a badly dubbed kung fu movie with none of the action. So it's got all the downside and none of the upside. <laughs> I, uh, Gino, you have to save us with a musical interlude here. Good oh, lord. Next. <laughs> one lesson. <laughs> one lesson. I know that you don't sounded, believe that me. sounded amazing, Gino. Amazing. Yeah, uh, Springsteen inspired that, <laughs> but uh, but that was that was. It's kind of Hans Zimmer esque. Trey, back me up it on is. that. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the new Hans Zimmer movie Conception is going to use that. I've been working on it. It's loosely based around the idea of <laughs> Thomas Hawk impregnating you, and you can only come out of that dream by having your cannon dumped into a tub of water. <laughs> but, that's an exclusive for your show, Trey. The really big Trey show. That's a bold plot. Are you really taking uh, lessons for your harmonica? Well, as you probably know, Trey, being a denizen, a former denizen of Austin, uh, Michael Rubin is the premier harmonica teacher in Austin. I'm sure you took lessons from him yourself. No, I did not. Wow. Well, that's a, that's a shame. But, yeah, I am this Thursday, my first lesson. I don't know if you can tell, but I haven't taken one yet. <laughs> well, we all uh, we're waiting with bated breath. Well, Gordon is back. Let's just do another test. Gordon, let's go for another introduction. Two, three, four, five. Can seven. you hear me? <laughs> yes. It was about six seconds delayed. This is sort of an AT&T delay that's built in, which makes having a conversation difficult. Mm -hmm. Even more difficult than my conversations with girls. This is going to be a challenge. <laughs> Where I would just ask a question and there would just be silence. It's like yes. waiting for the lunar module to make it around the, you know, where you can't, that's out of the yes. signal range for a little bit. <laughs> yes, it's like, it's like AT&T is on the dark side of Gordon's head. <laughs> and soon it has to emerge before we can communicate. Uh, I just got uh, Coke and whiskey on my, on my uh, keyboard after that one, Trey. <laughs> I'm glad you like that. Okay, Scott, why don't you introduce yourself? You've got a good lag. Oh no, now he's muted or something. Unmute. There. Unmute. There oh is. my gosh. Now wait a minute. Hold on. Let me let me let me just have a brief interview with my producer here. My my audio video producer of the show. 
I think I'm doing a fantastic job. This episode. One of his only jobs <laughs> is to make sure these things don't happen. Yes. Let's yes. let's have a let's have a status bridge report, damage report. What's happening? Um, well, on, everything on my everything ship. seems to, everything seems to be running real smooth. I'm real happy with how things are going so far. Just keep up the good work. All right. I thought you were going to say the Borg have breached levels nine through thirteen, and we're we're venting. What's happening? Wow. That's that's what I'm typing in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now let's see if there's no delay on mine though, right? Works now. Yeah, you're good, Kublin. Okay. So I'm Scott Kublin. I run a blog, HDR Photography Blog dot com, and only been into photography three or four years. Love it. Love hanging out with Google Plus, hanging out with other photographers. I'm not trying to sell you anything, so that's it. Ah, don't make it sound so untoward. Scott, I just I just give for the hobby of it, you know. It's just we understand. What can I say? That's cool. All right. Hey, so uh, while Gordon is gone and reconnecting, we have this amazing video we want to show. I uh, I think that people that follow me or Gordon regularly know that we're we are uh, big proponents of these these mirrorless camera systems. Yet, we still both use DSLRs. I use my DSLR quite a bit. My D800 is still the camera that I use uh, the vast majority of the time, but I always do have my NEX7 mirrorless camera with me. And I do think mirrorless cameras are are the future. So we've got this really funny video that came out, and we were going to play it now and uh, let you see it. But first, look who has jumped up to the scene. It's Thomas Hawk. Hey, Trey. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. You got I'm your side camp going. There we go. Now yeah. We're yeah. Now we're good. I'm just getting set up. I'm good. How are you, man? Good. Everything's everything's going going well. What have you been up to? No, you know, same old stuff. Taking a few pictures, processing a few pictures. You know. How are you on the march to one million? Uh, I'm getting closer. I think I've got uh, seventy-seven thousand on Flickr now. And uh, I'm processing, I think this weekend I processed like 350 photos. So I'm trying to do at least like 300 a week. And, uh, and I'm working on a big project to process uh, 1,800, though, in the next couple of weeks. Wow. Moving it along. Yeah. I processed about 100, but only kept about 15. It was an all, it was all family photo weekend, so I didn't really do any. Any um, you know normal work was all family stuff, but th those are good too. Yeah, um, those are those are always nice. Those are always nice. I think I'm getting a uh, Cartier Bresson says your first ten thousand photos are your worst. So and I, I hate I'm, that quote. You yeah, like that? I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna no, I, I, I hate that quote. I think I think that's so presumptuous, cheeky cheeky bum. How dare he consider my first ten thousand photos my worst? <laughs> oh really? So See, do you I think, think it's a presum? do you think it's a presumptuous quote? No, he just needs not see my pictures or your pictures. Well, no, but I think <laughs> I, know, I know, and I and I think with the digital now, it's your first one hundred thousand frames. Uh, are you? Yeah, probably. Man, because it's you know so many. You see, you can either take that as inspirational, or you can just think, oh, I'm going to give up now, and it puts you off. I I, I don't like that quote myself. You know, well, listen, if, listen. If that quote puts you off and you toss your camera, you didn't deserve it anyway. That's what I say. Get yes. out of here. Screw it. it. I'm going home. There you go. <laughs> I've had it. Besides, you see his first 10,000 pictures, they were terrible. My, I had some pretty bad pictures early on. <laughs> yeah. I still, my, a lot of yeah, it's, it's, it's like Henri, your first, it's like Henri, your first 10,000 photos are you worst. Don't, don't, you know, judge everyone else. Mm. Yeah, I, I saw his first 10,000 photos and they were all black and white. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That was yeah. a problem. <laughs> Come on. Actually, my last 10,000 pictures were the worst ones I've taken. So I don't agree with that quote at all. <laughs> no, I do think you get better with time, though. I think so. Yeah. I, Although, I hate my old work, but I leave it up because I think it kind of shows a, a, a path that might inspire people that if they just crank away for five or six years, they might get better. Thomas, have you ever thought about taking down some of your really – Stuff. I'm sure you've got old stuff that you don't like anymore. Yeah, yeah, I have, but I kind of keep it up there for, I guess, posterity. I don't know. I, I hate that, like, my first photo ever on my photos, Flickr photo stream is, like, 
this really crappy photo from my living room of my Microsoft Media Center set up. <laughs> it's like one of those big tower computer machines. <laughs> yeah. Tall. And people constantly go to that photo and they like leave comments. They say, oh, it's Thomas Hawk's very first photo. You know, how great. And it's like a horrible photo. It's just. <laughs> it was it's like Jim Morrison's movie. grave. Everybody's got to go look at it. Yeah, but I kind of feel like I should leave it up. But um, no, I feel, you know, I, I go back and I look now at some of the old stuff I had up and I'm like, wow, you know, there was so much noise in that photo. How would I, I can't imagine publishing something like that today. The noise is just terrible, and yet I did. Yeah, I think we've all, we've all been there. Okay, Dave, play that video, and then the discussion yes. will ensue. All right, before I play it, it's a video created by Jordan Drake and Chris Nichols from thecamerastore.com. Nice guys up in Canada. And we are, by the way, this is sort of a, a news-type <laughs> segment, so we're allowed, this is fair, fair use, I believe. So play that video. Play that funky video, white boy. Hey guys! Hey, I'm finally here! Let's get this party started! Oh man, it's Cannon! Who invited him? Oh, hey Cannon. We got to start without you. You're pretty late. Look, baby, we all know it's not a party until Cannon shows up, okay? Now here, you want to take a look at my huge sensor? Let me just pop this lens off here. Please, no, no! Oh, Cannon, oh, keep it on your lens mount. Please, it's not that impressive. Sony's still a little bit bigger. It sure is. Mine's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I only have two lenses right now. But, you know, for the time being, I can just borrow some hand-me-downs from my big brother, Ken, and I yeah, just got a 50 mil one That's That's great, man. Oh, Laika's here. Laika, what up, bro? Hello, my friends. <gasps> oh, my. I can see the outline of his full-frame sensor through that huge lens. Oh, guys, guys, can you get a picture of me with Like over here? You're my inspiration. I want to be just like you when I grow up. Yeah, yeah, take a number. <laughs> oh, <laughs> truly ridiculous. Yeah, well, at least I can autofocus Leica. Oh, please, it's called hyperfocal distance. Read a book. I, I'm a cannon. You can't do this to me. I'm a cannon. <laughs> hey, those guys don't understand me either. You want to hang out? My cousin Q is over. So, Gordon, this is actually really quite brilliant, isn't it? Gordon. Hello, Gordon. Oh, no. Is he broken? Again. Did we lose Gordon? Yeah, yeah he, was, he was good for a bit there, too. Now, forever, we'll just have this image of him stuck in a bizarre yellow bathroom. Yeah, so what's he looking at? I, I don't know. I don't mm. know. But I know that he loved that video as much as me because it was really spot on, especially that thing about the, the Nikon with the, the tiny sensor and everyone <laughs> just all over the Leica, and he's got such an attitude. It was great. Those guys are funny. Have they made other videos? Do you know, Dave? Um, well, I don't know about how many funny videos they make, but they do like a whole bunch of camera reviews and stuff. And the, the guy's very uh, happy-go-lucky, nice, friendly guy. It seems like so. I don't really know yeah. that much about them. Yeah, it was really well done. And I know Thomas, you're not even you're not even mirrorless curious yet, are you? You're all you're all big <laughs> iron and glass. Mirrorless curious. I hadn't heard that one yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, no, yeah. I, you know, I'm I'm kind of a die-hard DSLR guy. I think I will be for many years. Yeah, I, I think I'll be using my D800 for at least, if not the next year, the next two years until something, maybe the new NEX might have a, a bigger frame or maybe something will happen with even the, the APS-C size sensor where um, I don't see that much difference anymore. I already do. When when I was stuck with my NEX7 while my D800 was getting fixed, I was quite happy with it. I didn't get all the full frame goodness that I was used to, but I was still still pretty happy. I just don't know. I mean, are the lenses really there yet? Are the lenses good enough? Is my question. I mean, can yes. I get a 135? Can well, I get a 135 no, as good not as, as my good. Canon? No, I mean they they don't have the lens selection of all the DSLRs, but it has all the basic stuff. It has all the wides. 
Uh, Sony just launched a new wide-angle lens that I just bought, but I haven't received yet. Do you know, what's the size of that lens, Dave? Do you know? I do not know. Well, we'll look at well, it. Do, do you guys ever um, appreciate taking pictures at concerts? Because that's one place I've been using my Nikon V1 a lot. Is uh, They won't let you bring in a big DSLR, but you can take in your little mirrorless camera, even if they see it, like they check your pockets or something. They don't care because they see it so small and tiny. They'll let you come in and take pictures with it. And it's, for those purposes, it's just as good. It's usually if it has a detachable lens. At least that's what it's been for me. Yeah, they are they detachable lenses, they, they, but because because the lenses are so tiny, I usually just keep them in a separate pocket or get my wife to carry the lenses, and they'll just see the little bitty camera body and let me in with it. See, I, I'm at the point now where I will not go to a concert uh, at all, period, anymore, unless I can get uh, clear to bring my DSLR in. And then I'll go. But then, you know, then, I mean, you just can't compete, you know, with the 5D Mark III with the 70 to 200 or, you know, uh, even the 135 for concert photography. I mean, it's just, you can't compete. Well, the rest of the world is not Thomas Hawk. All no, right. So we, no, no, we can't no. say I'm not going to concerts unless they invite me in with my beast, you know. No, but you, you'd be surprised how easy it is to get clearance for most people, even on those things. You just, no, just take some I, I wouldn't be surprised. I've asked quite a bit, and uh, they've all said, get out of here. Of course, I've been asking an ACL, so maybe those, they just have a different standard. Yeah, ACL was great. I shot that, uh, but that was Dell. Dell got us in as corporate sponsors. But, uh, but no, a lot of them, if you just – I found in the past, if you just call, like, uh, not just not even Thomas Hogg, if you just call anybody and say – a uh, management company, not big acts. I mean, you can't get in to go shoot Bruce Springsteen. But if you want to shoot your favorite little indie band, you'd be surprised. You just call the call the company and say, "Hey, you know, I have a little blog and I want to put your photos up." And are you just, talking about calling the actual concert venue or calling the management team of the act? No, the management team of the act. Right. Can we just say that we work with you? Sure. Why not? I'm going to just say I'm Thomas Hawk. I thought that was the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, and then there's other, um, uh, you know, there's other ways to do it too. I mean, there's just so many different little blogs and sites. And if you tell them, hey, I want to shoot this act, and can I shoot it for you? Uh, Ice Cream Man, uh, they shoot a lot of these concerts, and you know, if they're familiar with them, they'll let you in. Hmm. That's a good tip right there. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing that I'll definitely still give to the big iron DSLRs is that even though my NEX7, I've got this 1.2. Like a lens mount, it's fine. It's it's really cool, but in low light, it's still not that great because even if you have 1.2, if you're shooting on a smaller sensor, you just can't get the same effect. You, you have light problems, you have noise problems. Uh, you just don't have those kind of problems with full frame DSLRs and and a, a similar 1.2 lens. So, you know, it's it's really apples to oranges. It's close. But in really low light stuff, a big sensor still helps. No question. Yeah. By the way, is the 10 to 18 millimeter is the Sony lens? That's right. It's 10 to 18, and it's a 1.5 crop, so that makes it 15 to 24, I think. Yes. So I've got that one on the way. I'm very excited about. Nice. I've got that one. That's my backup. This is uh, this is my new camera. Can you see it? Gordon helped me pick this one out. It's the Sony RX100. Oh, that's got the fixed frame or fixed fixed lens, right? Mm -mm, no. Oh, it's got interchangeable lens. Oh no. Well, yeah. I thought you just meant would it zoom in or out at all? No, it, I can't remove the lens. Um, yeah, but it good. will. It's a 1.8. Um, I don't know. I just got. I wanted something for concerts, but I wasn't looking to go and get concert shots, but just if I go and, like, we went and saw the um, the uh, Gymnastics Olympians in a concert, and I just wanted to have something with me that when I was sitting down in my seats that I could just take halfway decent shots. Plus, you know, the rule the rule about not having something with a detachable lens, which is just kind of crazy because of all the ones now that, that have detachable lenses that, or that don't have detachable lenses that get really good quality, but so this was this was perfect for me. I got some great shots, and um, it, it fits in my pocket. You know. By the way, Scott, I, I want to applaud you. That was an incredibly brave admission that you. Most people would be ashamed to admit they went there on purpose, but good for you, man. Don't let anybody make you feel embarrassed to go see gymnasts. Well, it wasn't until you said that. 
No, be proud of that, you know? Everybody, yeah. be, be, be a pioneer. I've got, no, I've got daughters that are into gymnastics, so that's why we went to see them. Oh, yeah, so I know. Way to make me feel um, like a jerk. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, you know, what's wrong with you? Good job. You know, three. You I've got three daughters that go to gymnastics, you know? Yeah. I'm surprised they I'm surprised they don't do more of these little cameras in pink for color scheme. Don't you think? Are you trying to make him feel bad again? <laughs> no, I <don't> <laughs> Are you suggesting that that's the color Scott should have gotten? I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Yeah. You know, it just goes with the camera, right? Right. Well, if it's pink, it would get lost in the color scheme of his purse. That's right. It's <laughs> exactly. hand purse. harder to find. Yeah. That's the... never have a gallery, but you know, if you go to the fair and you want to have a camera that you take along with you and you want to go on the rides and not carry around a tripod and DSLR, then that that's why I got this one. But I still have my my big Kahuna camera. Sky, you're not going to Renaissance fairs and taking pictures, are you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Kind of sounded like that's where you were going there. In San, in San Francisco, they have more leather fetish fairs. <laughs> no. Renaissance fairs. Not going to those either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Thomas, um, why don't you tell everyone, I read this, this nice blog post you made where you kind of analyzed uh, sort of like socio- behavior on a meta level at Google Plus versus versus Flickr. And I thought you had some nice um, observations. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's kind of interesting. Um, you know, I've been involved with Flickr pretty heavily ever since it started, and particularly with a lot of the Flickr groups. And there was, you know, I think right after Flickr started and Yahoo bought them, there was this sort of thriving community on Flickr. And it sort of dwindled down over time. and, and is, you know, with Google Plus launching, I mean, really, a lot of the photography community seems to have moved here from Flickr for the community stuff. And just in general, it's just congealed a lot more. And uh, the post that Trace talking about, uh, I think I, I wrote it on my blog, Google Plus, the nicer social network for photographers. Uh, you know, a couple of ways Google Plus has done things different. At Flickr, when you're in a group, uh, when you block somebody, they're... It's a, it's a very uh, weak block. What it means is basically that they can't comment on your photos or fave your photos. That's it. But if they're in a group, if you're in a group or a conversation or a thread, and they say, you know, Thomas Hawk is a jerk. I hate Thomas Hawk. You know, Thomas Hawk's photography sucks. Go die. You can't filter any of that out. You can't block people the way you can on Google+. When you block somebody on Google+, they just become invisible. There, it's like they no longer exist. But I think that was really smart on Google's part. I think when they just sort of designed it, they did it in such a way. And I know, Trey, you've had to deal with a lot of these people too over the years, I'm sure. Uh, you know, you get these people, and for whatever reason, they just decide that they hate you. You are the Antichrist. And they just come after you and just, you know, bother you again and again. And in Google+, Plus, I found if you, if you, you know, block those people, and a lot of your friends and people around you, not just your friends, normal, nice people block them all too. And the next thing you know, that person's just talking to an empty room and they're ranting on about how horrible Trey Ratcliffe and Thomas Hawk are and these are the devil and blah, blah, blah. But nobody's listening anymore. And, and you don't see it and so it doesn't bother you. So you have a better time. It's a better, more positive experience. And I think Flickr, on the other hand, they still don't have that down. And so, you know, I've seen a lot of people driven from Flickr because you get one really evil, bad person in there and Flickr makes it a little worse, too, I think, because they're so easy to create a free troll account and just hate on people with the trolls, and you don't even know who it is. Uh, but I, you know, from a so sociological perspective, it seems like Google really got that right, I think. And I think that's one of the reasons why people have more positive experience here. Yeah, I agree. Sometimes I wish it had a, <laughs> like, depending on who your friend, after you circle up a bunch of people, sometimes I wish it had a suggested block list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, Ray Rackliff, Thomas Hawk, uh, Scott Dublin, and Karen Hutton have all blocked this guy. Would you like to block him? <laughs> yeah, preemptive blocking. Yeah. Right. But, you know, the funny thing is, you know, I, I went back and some of these people that, like, I blocked right away, like, some of these, like, really, like, really hit. I mean, some of these people get really, like, violent and vicious. Yeah. You know, I've had, I've had people contact me and say, hey, I'm really worried about this guy, even. And what do you think? And. Uh, but if you know what I find is that eventually they go away because when everybody blocks them there's no they don't get the response they're looking for like a response they want to they want to create this big controversy 
And yeah, as they get yeah. blocked, and it, it Flickr, you could still do that in groups. So those people still show up in groups, and they, and some of it is just like, it's not even the block itself, but it's like the threat of the block. Yeah, like if you yeah. think, okay, well, I'm going to kind of be a jerk to this guy just because that's my personality or whatever. That's who, I think he's a jerk or whatever. At Google Plus, I think people think twice because they know, oh, wait, you know, if I'm too much of a jerk, people will block me. So I can't be that mean. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think uh, there's, you could break down all these haters into a couple different subgroups. There is a small percentage of people that are just mentally deranged and you just can't do anything about them. But I think actually there's the biggest chunk of these haters, they have a different mindset. And I think we could turn them to the light side of the force. And I think that the reason that they are uh, like this, that a big chunk of these people is that they come from an older school of thought. And like they see you, Thomas Hawk, how you're popular. And they think that it's a zero sum game. Right. And for every like you get, for every fan you get, for every follower you get, for every comment you get, it it takes away from likes and comments that they might get. Right? But right. that's actually not the way it is anymore. Now, if we all kind of do this stuff together, we can all grow together. It's not a zero sum game. It's not a it and actually that's a very typically um older um kind of almost like communist or, or I see a lot of Russians with this kind of kleptocracy background right. where there's like there's only X amount of stuff and you have to get your percentage of X and then you know run away from the game and you know I, f I find it's actually the opposite of a zero-sum game in that you guys the Thomas Hawks and the Trey Ratcliffe's stand to give the most. I mean, nobody's coming to Google Plus and they're going to learn that much from me. That's not to say they couldn't, but they're, they're not going to be. But you guys, because of the amount of time you spend and energy you spend giving at places like Google Plus, you are actually, the, the general masses stand to gain the most. Um, whereas it's, so, it's like the higher up you go, the more you stand to give. And that's what I find at Google Plus, is that the, the higher ups are actually giving so much more than any other place I go, and that's why I spend more time here. Well, this very show is proof of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think a lot's true in that. You know, I know I've tried to share circles a lot, and you know, two thousand photographers that I follow that I like, and try to promote other people and stuff as much as I can. Um, but I, I still think there's just this type of person. I, I, you know, Trey, you mentioned it. I do notice it a lot with you know, I mean, not the stereotype Russians or, or any Soviet you know Union type folks. Because some of them are quite generous, you know. I mean, Ivan yeah, Murkarov is from the yeah, Soviet Union. No, there's plenty of, plenty of very nice ones. <laughs> Good Russians. We love the Russians, too. It's too late to apologize. But sometimes there's also, like, this sort of the street photographer mentality. This guy kind of like, oh, well, I'm like Bruce Gilden, and I get in your face, and I'm, you know, I'm just a jerk. That's who I am. And it's kind of like they think it's a badge of uh, honor somehow to be this sort of, you know, tough guy person. And, you know, you see these people sometimes, I mean, I, I, I don't even, it's not even, they don't even cross me sometimes and I block them. If I see somebody just leave like a real jerk comment on somebody else's photo stream, oh, this photo sucks, you don't know what you're doing, what are you, blah, 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 I'll just block them right there because, you know, what, you don't have time for those people. Yeah, man, I just go open gangum on them. That's what I do. <laughs> I am. I've noticed. I'm getting less of that, though. Uh, not not more of it. I don't know if it's if they're getting auto blocked. Maybe um, I don't think I've blocked nearly as many people as you have. But I I don't think I've blocked anybody in about three or four weeks, actually. I, I think I think Thomas's style probably lends to people because Thomas is more opinionated. You know, and uh, not that I think it's a bad thing, but he gives out a whole lot more critical opinions on things in general. And I think, uh, Trey, your vibe tends to be a little bit more of a fun vibe and a friendly vibe. So I think he probably endears himself to the haters more. <laughs> Actually, That's how he got me. There's this, there's this comment today on the thread, Thomas. I don't know if you saw it. It was from Aaron, I think was his name. And he goes, uh -huh. oh, my gosh, I'm so surprised that you're – you're going on a show with Thomas and Trey are going to be together. I Dark thought they were enemies. mortal enemies. <laughs> yeah, yes. Who would think that? I guess yes. everyone just thinks that Thomas Hawk is a mortal enemy with everybody. 
No. But see, I think that's that same zero-sum <laughs> mentality. They think that you and Thomas must not be friends because you're both going after the same pie, when in, the truth is there is no pie. Come on. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's probably it's it's probably because that super angry post I wrote about you, Trey, for getting to four million <laughs> followers before me. Yeah. Yes. I was wondering if you were going to bring that up. Yes, I know. I'm still bitter about that. It hurts. Uh, yes. it, it's just, just a rounding error, isn't it? Not really. <laughs> no, hey, not you. Know, uh, you know how many followers I'm up to now on Google Plus? I think it's like three million nine hundred. 40,000 less than you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. I have you know, no idea. You know, I, I do think it's gotten better, though, Trey, because uh, I think people are realizing that it just is not the place for that. And so I think these people attract each other, too. Like, I've noticed some Flickr groups that sort of tend to attract these types of people. And I think they're just realizing that sort of, well, Google Plus isn't the place to be a jerk. It's just, you know, it's not effective. Right. But I think that's to Flickr's detriment, uh, you know, because I think that, you know, people get in these groups and nobody wants to have a bad time. Nobody wants to be attacked. Nobody wants to, you know, be ganged up on. And so, I don't know, maybe they'll fix it someday. Yes, yes. Well, something else that has happened, I think, just this week, isn't it, is Facebook did their photo sync upload thing. Did you see that, Scott and Gino? No, I did not. You mentioned something about it earlier today, and I didn't know what you were talking about. Yes. I have noticed that they're, that I'm having these little uh, photos automatically show up there, and it asks me if I want to upload them, but um, I haven't actually invested so, in it. Wait, so you did, not, you did not opt into it, but Facebook, well, you are auto-uploading to Facebook? Yeah, here's what happened is I got the new Samsung Note, and the, the guy that sold me this phone set up all kinds of options, and, and we talked about it. But honestly, I don't want things automatically uploading from my phone, but he set it up so that it would. And I think he set it up for my Google Plus and for my Facebook so that it would automatically load in there, and then I go in and decide which of these I want to actually share. But I, that's kind of dangerous to me. I don't like that. The whole concept of things just going there without me actually being aware that it's there, I don't like that. Well, but Google Plus has been doing that for how many months? Yeah, I don't like that either, though. Over a didn't year, they, probably. Didn't, didn't they copy, just copy Google Plus on that? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I think, I think Google's it's, had it for a while. What do you think, Tom? Yeah. They have. Well, I mean, you know, you come up with a good idea, why not steal it, right? Right. Everything <laughs> no. is derivative. Right. No, we, we do like Facebook, too. Uh I, you know, I don't use that feature. I purposely turn it all off. I just can't imagine publishing a photo unprocessed. I don't know about you guys. I, I keep it on. Uh, I don't use it on Facebook, but I use it on Google Plus for uh, family photos because I'm always taking, I take a lot of family photos on my cell phone. And it's kind of nice, actually, because I just, I click on my five favorite and then I share them to my family circle. And it's incredibly huh. convenient because even though, I think right now, out of I have ten people in my family circle, but only seven people are actually on Google Plus, and the other three are like emails. So it just gets emailed to them, and it's quite quite convenient actually. Hmm. Hey Trey, quick question, non sequitur. What are yes. what are some things that you miss about America, if any, so far? What are the things that you go, ah, I miss this? Well, um, the illusion of democracy. <laughs> No, I, I saw through that illusion a long time ago. Right. Well, I think I like uh, I like the Amazon Prime a lot. I like being able just to have something show up, um, you know, one or two days after I order it. That was really nice. Um, other little things like we we bought a, a washer and dryer down here, and it took about four weeks for them to arrive. You know, oh, I thought you world. were going to say four weeks to clean your clothes. I was like, is it because of the reverse spin? or? <laughs> <laughs> no, so things are just a little bit slower down here, but it's not the end of the world because while you're waiting, you're looking at, at beautiful things. So yeah. it's not so bad. I guess that's just my, my biggest... I'm used to getting things a little bit faster, but frankly, it's not the end of the world. You have to wait a couple more days. So that's hardly a complaint. You know. Good to know. So you're still in the salad days of your journey. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's all going well. Good. Good I'm glad to hear it. Good question. Yes. All right. Well, let's uh, jump right into photo sharing. Let's see what, uh, what's been going on lately. I have, I won't go first, but when I do show my photos, I've been really experimenting with a, a fisheye lens, which is, I'm, it's quite new to me. And I know Thomas has been, I remember when Thomas got his fisheye lens, it was only, was it a less than a year ago? Yeah, I love my fisheye. Yeah, I remember you were going crazy with it at, at Yosemite and and uh, I think it lends itself more to your your style of photography, but I also like it. Are you using it uh, as much? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, I went back and forth when I bought it. You know, I wish Gordon were still here because he, he could tell that story a little bit where it's just a lot of money to pay for kind of an oddball lens. And so I didn't know whether or not I really wanted to do it or not. And I went back and forth to the point where I called uh, to cancel my order that I had placed on it. And they said, well, it's, you know, it's too late because it's, it's shipped. I said, okay, well, you know, I'll keep it, uh, you know, I'll, I'll keep it anyways. And uh, I really love my 14 millimeter, which is not a fisheye, uh, but I actually like the 8 to 15 fisheye now better than my 14. And I use it for a lot of wide angle stuff that I wouldn't, you know, otherwise. And how often do you, uh, let's say you take 100 shots with that. Yeah. How many out of that 100 will you go and do the lens correction in Lightroom? None. None. Zero. Okay, you, yeah, you zero. leave it all warped and crazy. Yeah, but see, at 15, the 8 to 15 fisheye at 15, it's not that bad. It's, it looks yeah. pretty good. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like you can't tell uh, that it's a fisheye. So, I don't know. It's, um, I, I really like it. Interesting. Interesting. Why don't you start by uh, sharing some, some photos and talking through them? Sharing some photos, okay. We only have well, about ten minutes left in the whole show, by the way. So, <laughs> okay, well, rapid fire. speed round. Right. We'll go to rapid fire. Okay, let me let me. How do I fix my? Uh... And Thomas, I don't think you had that in Yosemite, did you? I think you had just ordered it. Oh, he did. Had he did? I did. I just gotten it. Yeah. Yeah. Karen, Karen Hutton borrowed it from him. There, I've seen some of her pictures using that lens. Yeah. Uh, I, I did like that. I got I got a couple of shots. I got one of uh, of Kimberly Shoemaker looking up with her hair in the redwood trees that I know Trey goes back to quite often. <laughs> yeah, it's, it sort of puts me in, in Jarvie mode. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm Just, sure he saw that pose. <laughs> yeah, Scott and her had a great time that trip, didn't they? Uh, so so Not so me. one of the things one of the things I'm doing is I'm reworking a lot of my old photos right now. I'm going back and reprocessing them, and I like like doing that. This is a shot uh, um, that I took a while back of an escalator and I just, you know, it's a longer exposure. I set it on the ground, tilt it, keep the shutter open. So you got the lines going up. It's more of an abstract. Uh, but I'm going back and doing other effects on the photo. So I'm using sort of a zoom effect in post-production where it's hard, harder to tell here, but it blurs more except for the center point of focus and stuff like that. So I'm just I'm just doing different things going back. Here's one using a horizontal blur. Again, more abstract stuff, sort of working with uh, after the fact. Here's another one again using the zoom effect with the blur in post production. Detroit. So that that's a lot of what I've been focusing on and, and going back and also you know changing color to things. You know, here's the same shot done two different ways. So here's one sort of blue and there's another blue. These shots were taken, you know, about uh, you know, two minutes from each other. Um, you know, taking old stuff and you know, inverting it, working with negatives and negative colors. So I'm probably working more with sort of that, you know, post-production type stuff uh, lately, even than you know a lot of new stuff. Here's again that blur. This is a sort of a instrument at the Country Music Hall of Fame. But been working more on abstract stuff, working more on uh, sort of reprocessing old stuff. Um, what instrument is that? I don't. It's this weird instrument with all these wires. I don't. I didn't even know what it was called. But this was like at the neck of it, and it all went into like this one hole. And so I just kind of created sort of a black hole. It's a you weird. Know, like a, it's sort of a greenish void. Yeah, the, the coloring is weird, and you know, using um, textures some too, and you know, old silhouettes or, 
you know, redoing old neon signs with textures. You know, I haven't worked a lot with textures. Here's more example of coloring with the, like the light painting. Like this is what I originally took it as. Then I painted it with green light painting. Um, you know, and then doing it in red. You know, and all this is all post production, so it's basically the exact same shot, just done with green and red. And so I, you know, I, I haven't done as much of that in the past. You know, t taking sh shots again and using more blur, horizontal blur to get more of an abstract. Oops. Feel. Um, so I don't know. That's that's. I've I've been working on uh, eighteen hundred different photos that I like. Uh, you know, right now and and doing stuff like that, going back, adding textures, adding. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Processing. Yeah, that's my son William in a tunnel, and you know, you got sort of these more abstract figures in the background. And um, anyways, that's kind of what I've been up to. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Thomas. Scott. Yeah. You have some rapid fire stuff for us. Sure. Go for it. Share like the wind. <laughs> okay. See it all right. Yes. All right. So this was a big hit the last time I did this. So these are just some of my before and afters, before processing, after processing. And most of them are bracketed shots, but there's a couple of them that were just uh, single raw files. But uh, So this is a shot from uh, Yellowstone. And this is a shot that I processed when I um, presented to a smug mug group out in LA earlier this year. So this is uh, the before picture. And uh, give that a second to load where there's the after. So the before and the after of that one. Next, um, the place that we went to in Yellowstone, you can only get there that time of year by snow coaches. And this is one of them. This isn't the one that we were on, but this was just one that I saw set up on the side. So here's the before of that. It's like a feed Volkswagen on steroids. Yeah. There's the after. Let me just show the before again. Subtle. In the after. So some of them are overly processed. Um, some are just, um, actually, I think all the ones I chose tonight were really um, to the extreme as far as processing. So here's one of the geysers that was out by the Old Faithful area. There's the after of that. Mm. Man, aren't they different? You do do so much with the post production. That's great. Yeah. Yep. And that was a bracket. That was a five bracket um, exposures. There's the after that one again. Okay. This is uh, Fort McAllister here near Savannah, Georgia. It's in Richmond Hill, Georgia. So that's the before. And there's the after of that one. And I think that was seven bracketed shots. This is a, this is just a single raw file. This was my, with my 5D3. Uh, this is a cotton field near Metter, Georgia. So that's the before, and then there's the after. And this is a shot that I took about three weeks ago. Uh, it was a Panola Mountain State Park, and I took it with that Sony RX100 that I showed at the beginning of the Hangout. So this is just a single shot before. And that's the after of that one. So it was before and after. I think that was my last. Oh, I've got one more. I just took this one um, on Thanksgiving Day. Actually, it was the sunset that evening. So this is the before. And this was seven bracketed shots. So here's the after. Mm -hmm. So I brought out quite a bit with that one. And that's it for me. All right. Thank you. I'll I'll rapid fire through mine. Um, where's my screen share? Screen share. Let me find my iPhoto. My iPhoto. There we go. So super quick. This is from this weekend. Uh, we went and uh, spent some time with a, a miniature pony. Those are my daughters brushing the miniature pony. Uh, here's a new one from last week. I thought maybe you just had really big kids. That's <laughs> how they do trick photography down here in Middle Earth. Here's uh, uh, the Meraki boulders, um, a little road trip last weekend. And here are all my wide angle shots with the, uh, the um, this is with the 16 millimeter fisheye.
from Beautiful. Nikon. Um, well, so what, it, what's that location? This is the Paris Opera House. Yeah. And it's already quite warped and strange. And actually, I looked at it with lens correction, and I like this version better. Um, here's a few more that I took with it. Uh, this is also inside the Paris Opera House. It's a really cool location. Uh, this is the um, hotel that um, I stayed in in Paris. It's a beautiful place called the Hotel Banc. Um, here's another picture from inside there from a different angle. Oh, that's your suite, right? <laughs> yeah, that's my bed over there on the right and yeah. the bar on the left. <laughs> um, and here's sort of a close-up. You got to get with that fish eye. You got to get in tight whenever you want to take a photo of something. Yeah. You you know this. You're quite experienced. So here's a side by side of the fish eye, the Nikon fish eye, 16 millimeter versus the 14 to 24. Um, so this, by the way, this is not my fish eye. I borrowed this from Tom Anderson, but I just ordered my own because I liked it so much. Uh, this is uh, with the fish eye, okay. And this one is with the 14 to 24. So I really like the 14 to 24 better than the fisheye one. Um, but in this particular case, uh, I mm. think 14 millimeter was just more than enough to get in what I wanted to get in. Um, plus, I like I I don't really like my post processing on the on the fisheye one. But I have all these side by side and more. I have a little new review over on the website of the. Uh, Nikon fish eye. Okay, I will unscreen share. Nice work. Does anyone have any final comments before we have to disconnect so that YouTube can process this before they go down for maintenance? Well, I've uh, you know I, I'm 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 not like you guys. I'm not cool like you know Thomas and 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 Trey. You know I, I don't have billion dollar in you know ingenues like a Marissa Mayer from Yahoo listening to me and Hans Zimmer is not composing soundtracks based on my life like he does for Trey. But I am about two things. I'm about moving product and I'm about pancakes. So if you want to see, if you want to buy some of my product or possibly buy pancakes at the same time, I am at the William Cannon and Mopac Kirby Lane uh, location for December and January where you can eat world-class flapjacks and buy my work. I am not ashamed to push product. Nice. Good. Everyone should go buy his work. I agree. Yes. Thank you. Yes. If you get nothing from tonight's show but that, I think that will be enough. <laughs> good. The Kirby Lane is a good place, too. So even if you don't enjoy his art, you'll enjoy your, your flat. Impossible, box. but hypothetically, I agree. <laughs> and I am taking harmonica lessons. Oh. And here I thought that was Scott who was our musician tonight. No, no, you're mistaken. No, he's got Scott a guitar too, Thomas. Awesome. You missed that. Oh, I missed that part. I was late. All right. Well, thanks, Dave. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks, Gino. Oh, he's busted out here. Play us, play us a guitar tune while while I, we log off here. Yeah, play something copyrighted, preferably. <laughs> Two lessons. I don't know if you can tell, but two lessons. That's all. Wow. That is it's amazing. Good. I am gifted.